ಬಂದೇಹಂ The following is a morning walk conversation with his divine grace AC Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada recorded on the 4th of April 1975 in Mayapur India gadgets to anthropology anthropology university of avidya yeah right here yeah. avidara ghore kato nidra jao maya avidara ghore psychiatrist yeah all western adventure yeah. to keep people in darkness and that is going on now it will be smashed by the next war next war will come very soon yes your country america is very much eager to kill this communist and the communists are also very eager So very soon there will be war, and perhaps India will be the greatest sufferer. Sufferer, because America is aiming to start the war from India. Yes. Because India and Russia, yeah. they are no side by side. Yeah. Mm. If the war is started from India. the russians are ready here already i have heard with soldiers and not soldiers i want to say huh eh? missiles ah yes they are also vigilant will that help our preaching prophet preaching will be very nice after the one when both of them especially russia will be finished you want to make india the battleground also prophet atri rishi said that the uh, arabs mm. are preparing for the war they're buying billions and billions of dollars worth of missiles and uh, jets and tanks mm. from america yeah so uh, then being prepared war will soon start the so arab the- men all go to america to be trained <clears throat> in the armed forces there mm? in all the armed forces centers in america they train the arab nations to fight oh. they let the young men come into the usa to learn how to use the missiles and everything recently this bhutto of pakistan he was very happy because they were talking about lifting a 10 year holding on arms from the united states and help they say pakistan will soon get arms from america yeah they're, they're getting they they're already getting the pakistan will start the war with india and then everything will be again pakistan just has started the war maybe eight times hmm? now we can go what will the devotees do while the war is going on <laughs> chant hare <laughs> krishna <laughs> <laughs> you have got only business <laughs> will we stay in the city sir will we can stay anywhere we have got our mahapur bindam but the danger is the government will say that all americans go out that is the danger i am thinking of that position what shall i do at that time the intelligence ship if you take it is very nice 
then they are ask you to go to work. <laughs> will this war spread to many different countries and continents? The actual war will be between America and Russia. What about British devotees, British citizens? Hmm? Would the British be asked to leave? British citizens? Commonwealth citizens? British sides are now finished. They have no importance. He means that British devotees came to India, would they be asked? No, no, I want to say, I'm speaking of politics. Oh. Devotees are the same. You said the Americans might have to leave. What about the British? Oh. But they generally, during what time? Uh-huh. Everyone. They ask all foreigners. Oh, <coughs> during the last war, the uh, Christian mission in Krishnagar, mm. they had many Italian priests also, mm. but the government gave them permission to stay, although they, uh, India was at work. And, uh, in the missionary consideration. What will be the position of the Chinese, Russians, and Americans? Well, I'm not a politician. <laughs> <laughs> China does not want war. They want to Develop. construct. They're not ready. Yeah. They're not very much interested in war. Prabhupada, you said that this war will destroy the demonic civilization. Does that yeah. mean that it, it'll uh, destroy all the cities and all the industries? The war means destruction of all cities. It is natural. We have got experience in Europe so many times. Cities and industries. Huh? Cities and industries. Yeah, that is the main Nobody, target. Nobody's interested in a, in a farm. Without separate endeavor, a few uh, devotees automatically expert in everything. Yeah. Politics, economics. Yeah. Just mean vigyate sarmavitam vigyatam bhavanti. If you know Krishna, then you understand everything. That is the Vedic India. Just mean vigyate. If you simply understand Krishna, I mean, in the Bhagavad Gita it is also said that there will be no more anything to understand. In the ninth chapter, what is that verse? Can anyone say? Abhushishyate. Gyatabham Abhushishyate. You cannot understand the whole verse. Yajgyatva Nehabhu Yonyaj. That is the second line. First line. Saimam Guyatamam Bhakshami Sheshataha. Bhakshami, yes. That is the verse. Yajgyatya Annaj Gyatabham Abhushishyate. Consciousness is such a great science. If he one becomes expired, then he knows everything. So, uh, Prabhupada, is there something we should do to prepare ourselves for this uh, disaster? Hmm? Well, we more. should simply prepare for chanting Hare Krishna. That's all. That's all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Prabhupada, people sometimes argue that God placed us in this world. People argue that God has placed us in this world and that he's left us in darkness, so therefore he's played a trick on us. What is our argument against this? You have come to this world of darkness, and Krishna is trying to raise you again to the light. That is, you have willingly come to this nonsense place. Krishna is so kind that he comes himself and tries to again get you out, deliver from this nonsense thing. This is real position. If God has put us here, uh, He's given us intelligence, so we're to figure it out ourselves. So therefore you take intelligence from God, you rescue. Why do you keep yourself in darkness? We say that God has given us the intelligence to figure it out on There is intelligence, you surrender. You are surrendering to Maya, to your wife, to your dog, to your family, to your house to your nation, why not God? You rascal. You are surrendering to so many other things, why not to God? It's like you told that Russian professor that he is surrendering to Lenin, mm-hmm. we are surrendering to Krishna. Yeah. That everyone has to surrender. Surrender, is, that is the only way. You cannot become independent. You have to surrender. Who is a man who has mm-hmm. not surrendered? At least he finds out a dog and surrender to him. In your country there are so many people living with the dog. You know, surrender is the only business of him. 
Jivir Sarupa Nitta Krishna. So, Uchidananda cannot come. He's lecturing in the temple. Shri oh. Prabhupada, mm. someone asked a question the other day about the atom, which mm. I couldn't give the answer to. Mm. His question is that if we say that within the atom, the living entity, the jiva is present, mm. and life symptoms means six symptoms of birth, growth. That's all right. Their life symptoms has not yet come, but there is potential. Yeah. His question was, it, it, uh, it was sort of a dual question. At what time, or what, uh, just like at the time of disintegration of this body, the living entity leaves this body and the body disintegrates. So does the atomic body also disintegrate when the living entity leaves it and moves to a higher body? Atomic body? Atomic body means material body. Unless you are free from this material body, the atomic body will go on with it. That means unless you are mukta, mm. the atomic body is gone. Mind, intelligence, ego, they are also atomic. Mm. Finite atomic body. But within each atom, the living entity is present? Yes. Yeah. God is present, therefore living entity is present. So the living entity is present within the atom, just as I am present within this body. When I leave this body, my body breaks apart. Yes, you leave this body and turn another body. Right. By nature's law. And when I leave this body, the body breaks apart. When I leave this body, mm -hmm. the body... The body is already atomic combination. Yes. So, it remains atomic combination. Oh. You leave the body. Yes. You, yes. you leave the house. That does not mean the house is finished. Right. He's asking that if the soul leaves the atomic particle, then does the particle break apart, isn't it? No, no, you have, you have not left atomic particle. No, but you, I think you were saying that within the atom there's also a living entity. So when that living entity leaves the atomic particle, does the particle break apart? Or does it? I mean, what let's try to understand. From the Shastra you understand. Mm. The Anantarasam. God <coughs> is within the atom. Yes. And when the God is there, living entity is also there. This is this much you try to understand. Because God and living entity, they remain together as two friends. God is trying to save this fallen friend. That is the information from Upanishad. So when God is there, the living entity is also there. So Paramatma and Jivatma are always together. Yes. Can we say that the living entity is present within the atom by consciousness? Hmm? No. Consciousness will gradually develop according to the bodily situation. How does the jiva get out of the atom and take a gross body? Hmm? How will that jiva insert? Body is combination of atom. How he gets out of the atom? Body is nothing but combination of many atoms. Everything material is combination of many atoms. Yes. The jivas inside the atom, are they like impersonalists who are in the Brahman? That you consider. He has not developed his consciousness. Practically, it is like dead. Actually, there was a war, large-scale war. I think that our farming project hmm? I think that the various farms would be very good because, as you said, the cities would be bombed. Mm -hmm. The farms would not be disturbed. Yes, yeah. the farm project, uh, even some hundreds of years, it was so nice. Even there was war, they would not attack the farmers. Rather, they would not, where the other party has gone. So they would say, we have seen some soldiers going this way. <laughs> they are not affected. That was the principle. The farmers were not attacked. Just like at the present moment the law is the civilians are not attacked. The military target is attacked. That is the law. But they do all nonsense. 
even at the present moment, civilians are not attacked. Just like Kurukhetra battle, it was taken far away from the civilian inhabitation. Some field. Yeah, that is civilization. Why these innocent civilians should be killed? Let us fight military to military. That's all. That is honest fighting. We have to settle some things by fighting. So fighting may be, I mean, limited within the fighters, not with the civilian. They, they are so rascals. They throw bomb anywhere. Yeah. Hmm? Especially atom bombs. Yeah. But one thing is that. Civilians are also responsible for declaring war because the parliament is the representation of the people. Karma. Mm -hmm. Therefore, now the war is between people to people, nation to nation. They support with men and money. So therefore they are also killed by nature's law. But in the Adi Lila, you wrote that the uh, communist movement mm. is um, greater than the capitalist movement because there are more sudras mm. than uh, vaishas. So that in a war mm. between communism and capitalism, the communists would win. Naturally, they are in greater number. These modern wars are fought with missiles and bombs mm. more than armies. Yeah, normally also there are brahmastra. Problems that we are facing, they were also in the past under different name, different form. You wrote that if the communists are victorious, they would destroy whatever is left of the culture. Yes. Victory for the communists meant the whole human culture is lost. The devil yeah, also attacked the Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. Yes, they have already begun. They are not passing our temple in Bombay. If after the war the preaching will be still good, that means the communists will not be victorious. Yes. The Americans will win. Honest people will take to religious way of life. The communists becoming victorious means uh, they are also winning. Who is that simply person sitting under the tree? Krishna Krishna Krishna. Oh. <laughs> too much danger, you all come and sit down here, yeah, turn to Krishna. That's all. Yeah. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we can go to Africa also. Oh, yeah, anywhere we can go. <laughs> so many places, yes. <laughs> Hong Kong? <laughs> <laughs> Some devotees has, has to stay in Europe or in, in America. Yes, everywhere you stay. We have got a place like this. Our farms are very nice because economically, when everything is in chaos, we can still provide food for our men. Yeah. And milk and butter. Milk and butter. In America, no. <laughs> that if there is a war between Russia and America, mm. it would be a nuclear war, and they would pollute the whole atmosphere with radioactive particles, which would kill everyone. It is already polluted. They say that this radioactive fallout... The whole material world is polluted. We live here. Hare Krishna, A little, I said, 20 years before dying. After all, we have to die. Yeah. 20 years after or 20 years before? So it is already polluted. Yeah. That is humbuggism. They will die at the end, yes. but still they are trying to leave. Like they are creating their own... This is the difference between man of knowledge and without knowledge. 
A man of knowledge will think, after I have to die, so what is the difficulty? Dying a few days more before. <laughs> that is knowledge. And those who are not in knowledge, they are afraid of death. Best business is before the death comes, let us finish our Krishna consciousness perfectly. That is one. Death will come. You cannot avoid it. They say that this radioactive fallout hmm. will pollute the air so that no crops can be grown. That's all right. You shall die without food. Oh. After all the death, then Bengal is a Moradwara garden. The most misfortune thing is death. And that will come. <laughs> Therefore, the best intelligence is how to avoid death. Become immortal. Yeah. That is real intelligence. Not to be bothered by this trifle, temporary things that I am dying uh, twenty years before. If the situation was better, I would have lived more twenty years ago. But it is God. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we go back to God.